14, Huddersfield Giants 17. What a fantastic spectacle to pull down the curtain on a feast of rugby league this bank holiday. Over 83,000 people in the stadiums cheering on their teams. It was a fantastic spectacle, wasn't it? As for Lee's Rhinos, well, they were, of course, buoyed by the fact that they had returning plays for this game. Richie Mile and then A. McDonald, and of course, Ash Handley, surprisingly, including in Rowan Smith starting 13, and Handley and McDonald on the wins did a fantastic shift. McDonald, of course, man of the match, 25 carries, 206 metres, and Ash Handley with 20 of his own, with 142, as well as his cheeky little try as well. Fantastic stuff. Speaking of returning players, McGain, uh, Jermaine McGilvery returned uh, for this game, he's third of the campaign. Of course, he's had a torrid start with injuries this season thus far, and Jermaine had a stellar game, 21 carries, 191 metres, a brilliant try in the corner, and held up twice, very, very close, of course, uh, just short of the line on two occasions. McGilvery, outstanding. What a player, and what a career that man has had. Now then, of course, it all started off superb with that McGilvery try, and there's no question that the Huddersfield Giants got off to a flying start. Chris McQueen, of course, uh, getting his first of two tries very early doors for a very nice 12-0 lead. And, of course, then came that con con controversial moment when Richie Myler got sent to the, uh, to the bench for 10 minutes. And, you know... I have to say, as a neutral, very harsh. Yes, did he touch Jermaine McGilvery's face? Yes, he did, but it was no worse than the challenge on Myler in the second half. And again, consistency uh, coming in, uh, you know, to question in this one with regards to that. And I think what was disappointing in that particular period, that 10 minute period, is that the Giants, for all their dominance, could only get that penalty. They started to overplay for me, uh, which was quite disappointing. And a lot of people have asked, you know, can Lalahea, uh, Connor, and Price be in the same team. And what was quite interesting was the amount of times that they were rotated. Price started at fullback, then he shifted into the halves. He put Lola Hoyer into the into the fullback position. And for me personally, you know, I'm not too sure about that. You know, in rugby league, I think consistency is key. And I think if you're going to start moving players around unforced, which that is, that's a rotation policy. All three of those players stayed on the field of play for the whole 80 minutes. I think for me, I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure about that. Yes, I think if there's injuries or something like that that makes you having to move players' positions, that's perfectly acceptable. But I'm just not sure that by rotating those players, they're going to get that consistency and that understanding that is required to get over the line. Huddersfield, again, like we said, coming very, very close once more. A big shout-out has to go to Cameron Smith. I think Cameron Smith this season has been superb for the Leeds Rhinos. He's probably one of the most informed loose forwards this season, without question. Another 48 tackles. He will remain the top tackle tackler in Super League uh, at the end of round number eight. Uh, he was all over the field, wasn't he? And, of course... You know, we must mention before we, we talk about his try, a brilliant try by James McDonald. I thought that was a really good, good try indeed. And this is a player that, of course, since arriving at Leeds now, starting to get a settled uh, spot in the side. And he, he looks a bit of a player, it has to be said. Superb stuff. Um, there was a few things that, that you know... Caught my eye watching the game. Uh, let's be honest, Mr. Harry Newman got a little hot under the collar once more, didn't he? Um, Chris McQueen jumping like a gazelle. Uh, but no, I mean, I think the big controversial moment has to be the Cameron Smith try. Uh, what on earth is Liam Moore doing there? Yes, the players on the left-hand side are on side, but clearly Cameron Smith is offside and in the 10 at the point of the, uh, you know, in terms of what happened with Richie Myler and Jim. Jermaine McGilvery, and that should have been chalked off without question uh, for, for offside, and that pretty much was the game-breaker. There's no doubt about it. Uh, you know, Chris McQueen, of course, responding in kind uh, later in the game for the Huddersfield Giants, but that is a big decision to get wrong, especially when it's on the TV. When the, you know, why was he so quick to just say, yeah, they're all on side on the left, when it was the players on the right that scored the try? Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Um, 17 errors in this game for Huddersfield. Like I say, compounded uh, the 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 performance for them for me uh they overplayed at times that rotation didn't work and you know jake connor's got to do better the kick after the uh, second mcqueen try that isn't a difficult kick uh again you know he's a great talent is, is connor but in big tight games at times his his attention to detail is questionable and he's got to do better than that and i think that that's something that perhaps ian watson now will consider going forward uh you know who he's taking those kicks at big pivotal moments do i think lola Hale would have popped that one over I think he probably would have done. I think sometimes you've just got to go with that more uh, settled head in that situation. And of course, at that point, he would have put them in the lead that Connor thought he had put them in the lead because again, 75 minutes into that match and Connor, rather than going for the drop goal, kicks it out. 
I mean, oh dear. I mean, yeah, okay, in the heat of battle, these things happen. But when you bring in a player uh, with the talent of Jake Connor, um, you know, let's be absolutely honest here, that the guy is revered in the game. He's got to be better in those situations. Leeds seem to have a habit this season of coming back from behind. And this is another good scalp for them, of course. St. Helens, Catalan, and now Huddersfield. As for Huddersfield, they're going to be a little bit concerned because, you know, you know in terms of, True playoff contenders, Wigan, St. Helens, Leeds, uh, and of course, Warrington Wolves. They, they've come back bare, hasn't they? The cupboard, like old Mother Hubbard, is certainly bare, isn't it? <laughs> but uh, they've got to do better. They've got to do better. I think the Huddersfield fans now starting to get just a little bit concerned. This next run of games is very critical. And of course, this week, they, they welcome another playoff contender in the Catalan Dragons to the John Smith Stadium on Friday. And for me, they have to win that game. If they don't win that game, I think serious questions are going to be um, asked of, of Huddersfield. They came into this season with so much promise, with great recruitment. And I get Ian Watson's point, it's got to settle down, but you can't rotate, like I've already said, and I think that he's got to get to a settled 13 as quickly as possible. I think in the forwards, they're OK. It's what I think the centre partnership is is, is in situ in terms of Nagara and Masters. If I was Masters, I'd, I'd put his uh, scrum cap back on because he seems to be in better form with it than without it. Um, but yeah, I think those positions are pretty much steady. It's that spine of the team that he's got to get right. We know that Nathan Peace is going to be in hooker. So he said that, you know, they haven't got a settled team at the moment sorry but these players are now back I get the fact that you know Phil Farge is out Ollie Russell of course was missing through hamstring on this and he's played a lot of games for Huddersfield this season so I sort of get that but when you looked at the start of the season on paper you'd have thought that without question it was going to be a pick of four Farge, Price, La Jolla and Connor uh, it's Russell has forced his way into the team and congratulations to him for that but they'd be the four and of those four only one is missing of course they've got the other three and of course there's only you know three positions between fullback standoff and scrum half so I think Watson at the moment is deflecting as all good coaches do he's talking about process all the time when you're winning it's fine but when you're losing Fans hate that word processes and structures. They really do. And he's going to start getting a bit of flack for that. As for Rowan Smith, he will be delighted. A great win, this one for Leeds. At half time, I did not see a Leeds Rhinos win. I actually went Huddersfield in the predictions as well this week. And, uh, you know, by one to eight. And of course, it ended up being the other way. I did think it would be a close battle between these two. And it turned out to be exactly that. Leeds will be pleased. Of course, just sitting outside the top six. They're in seventh, um, you know, going into to round number nine. But yeah, Leeds doing what Leeds do grinding out results staying in and around the playoffs they'll probably just creep in like they always do but Smith will be relieved this was a real real tussle a great spectacle for the eye great game of rugby league what a feast we have had during rivals round with the exception of the whole derby which was a complete blowout every other game had drama it had intensity it was just a great advertisement for the greatest game of all tell your friends about it tell your family about it tell anybody who doesn't watch rugby league about it this is what real sport looks like ladies and gentlemen so make sure that you tune in once again for round number nine that's coming up this week it's going to be another blockbuster weekend of rugby league football that's been in the sheds have a good day everyone.